Hello, this is Peter from Solar Project. This is a short video uh, as a support item for anybody who's bought a Solar Project pump, and there are many, many thousands of you out there, um, and think you might have a problem with it. Every now and again, I'll get an email from somebody that says, hey, my pump stopped working, or the pumps come in the post but I can't get it to run, what's wrong with it? Fault finding on these is very simple and frankly they're an extremely reliable pump so they don't go wrong very often. Essentially if you think about the history leading up to the point at which it stopped working that gives you a big clue. So for example if the pump has just arrived in the post and you're having trouble getting it running, then almost certainly the problem is going to turn out to be the power supply that you're feeding into the pump. I check every one of these pumps before I send them out, just to make sure that they're running when I connect it to the battery. So they're, they're running when they leave me, there's a very good chance they'll be running when they, leave, when they find you. So if, it, if it's just arrived and it's not running, then I suspect the power supply is the most likely problem. I've got a little checklist here of items that you want to think about and really the order in which you need to think about them. The power needed by a 12 volt pump, whether it be the 6 watt model, the 8 watt model or the 14 watt model, they all need between 9 and 14 volts in order to run and the power supply needs to be rated at sufficient amps to match the amps needed by the pump. So for example the 6 watt pump actually needs half an amp so you need a power supply that's rated at, at, at least half an amp or 500 milliwatts. The 6 watt model is going to need about two-thirds of an amp and the 14 watt pump is going to run best on something over an amp so if you're choosing a, a plug-in power supply say like this one and you have a choice as to the different ratings that you can get I would say go for one that's rated at one amp or more to be safe because you don't want to get a power supply that's having to run at 100% all the time. It's much more likely to break down. The pump has two wires, a red wire and a black wire. The red wire needs to go to the positive side of the power supply and the black to the negative. If you reverse those, it doesn't actually damage the pump but it certainly won't do it any good. So if you've reversed the polarity by mistake, don't worry, you won't have killed the pump, but um, disconnect it immediately and get them the right way round. Red to positive, black to negative. So the first check is, have I got the polarity right? The second check is, have I got the voltage that I'm expecting arriving at the power supply, with the power supply wires? quick way to check that is with a multimeter if you have one turn it to DC volts and it must be DC AC power will not operate these pumps and just check the voltage across your power supply in this case I'm looking for 12 volts I'm actually reading zero so that's the problem here my power supply is not working or in fact I've not plugged it in. Plug the power supply in and there we go I'm getting 9.26 volts at the moment which is enough to run the pump. One interesting thing sometimes you might find that you've got enough volts coming in but when you connect the leads to the power supply the pump leads to the power supply you'll actually see the voltage dropping and that would indicate 
that your power supply is, is too low an ampage. So if that's the case, then think about getting a, a more powerful power supply. So we're checking the polarity, we're checking the volts. A useful thing to check as well is whether the power supply is producing enough amps. And one quick and easy way to do that is by putting a car light bulb across the power supply leads just to check that the power supply isn't producing the volts but not, not the amps. So here we go. Yes, you can see the light bulb is lighting up nicely. So I'm confident about that power supply. That's certainly not the issue. So we've got a good 12 volts coming in and yet my pump isn't running, what's the next stage? Well, the next stage is to disconnect the power because if you've got 12 volts going into the pump and it's not revolving, then what you're doing is producing heat in the pump body. That's not a good idea because eventually it'll distort the pump body and damage the pump. So at this stage, disconnect the lead and then we'll have a look inside the pump itself. The pump chamber is held by four screws and sealed with a clear silicon o-ring. So as you lift as you lift the pump chamber off the pump, just watch out for that o-ring to make sure that you don't drop it. It's actually contained here in this little recess so that's nice and snug. Okay the next check and this is very relevant to home brewers who've used the pump once and find the second time they come to use it it won't start up. Sometimes these pumps if they're not cleaned thoroughly after pumping su thick sugar solution as used in brewing will glue up so that the rotor is unable to turn and obviously that means it's not going to be pumping. So one of the checks with the, with the wires still disconnected so we've got no power going in is just to try turning that impeller by hand. And you can see that it turns freely but there's a magnetic resistance at about every, what is it, 90 degrees. So you can feel the magnetic resistance but then it will flick in and vibrate into its next seated position. So that shows that this one is turning freely and it's not gummed up. If you're having to turn it by hand and you can feel any resistance, then it will be gummed up with sugar. And the solution in that case is to get a mug of boiling hot water, as though you're making a coffee, and then drop the whole pump into the mug and then leave the pump for about an hour for the hot water to penetrate and melt any sugar that's blocking the bearing in here. If you just leave that for an hour and then turn it by hand you'll feel it gradually begins to ease up and when it's eased up enough to be turning freely by hand you can connect it back to the power still with the end off and watch it turn. Once you get to that stage, pop the end back on, screw it up and start pumping warm water round, uh, round the whole circuit just to clear any, any residual sugar. When you come to do these screws back up, they don't have to be tight. Make sure the o-ring is in place and just nip it up and it'll make a nice snug seal again. None of this would void your warranty. I don't play those sorts of games. So feel free to have a look in. If you think there might be a problem, have a look in before sending it back saying there's something wrong with it. I'd far rather you fixed it and didn't have the inconvenience of having to wait for a replacement. And I'm, I'm sure you'd feel the same. So the checks we've gone through are the power 
have we got the polarity right? Have we got the volts that we're expecting delivered at the, uh, at the leads? And is the power supply producing enough amps to actually turn it? Do the wires look okay? Are there any faults, any snags on the wire that could be causing a problem? Is there a break in there that you can't see? And finally, is it free to turn? One other thing you could try, especially if the pump was working but seems to have stopped now, is once it's turning freely, if it then doesn't turn when you reconnect the wires, just try turning it by hand with the power on and see if you can feel any distinction between the power on and the power off in terms of the magnetic resistance operating. I'm pretty confident that if you run through that checklist, you'll have a working pump again. But if you have any problems, I will always replace any faulty pump. Uh, so please contact me and uh, we can sort it. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much. It's Peter from Solar Project.